Where do I begin? This game has left such a positive impression on me that it's hard for me to want to say anything but play this game. I swear it's well worth it without spoiling the whole game. But allow me a moment of your time to tell you why Ender Lilies, Quietus of the Nights, is worth your time and why you should play it, despite the difficulties you may face along the way. Developed by Binary Haze Interactive and released on June 21st, 2021, Ender Lilies, Quietest of the Nights, is a dark fantasy metroidvania. When I say dark, I don't mean edgy for the sake of being edgy, but dark, as in the devastation, the environmental design invoking gothic architecture, low lighting, and numerous rooms to add a sense of claustrophobia, the feeling of truly being alone in a dead kingdom. Earlier this year, I played Hollow Knight for the first time, another metroidvania which also took place in a dead kingdom, except everyone was bugs and there was always a safe haven you could return to with Dirtmouth. Ender Lilies doesn't have that. There are no people here to talk to, there's no one to save except yourself and your immortal companion. You play as Lily, a little girl who looks to be no older than 10 to 12 years old, and instead of fighting herself, you manipulate spirits of the dead to do the fighting for you. I guess that sounds a little more harsh than it really is. You see, Lily is a white priestess, and it's her job to purify those who have been turned by the blight, a world-ending event that brought this kingdom of land's end to ruin, and Lily's abilities are of the people she purifies. Barring her constant companion, a masked knight who the game refers to as the Umbral Knight, who I'll refer to as Umbral when I talk about him directly. The story itself is not told in a present tense, but instead throughout the game, you'll come across various notes and letters left behind by the kingdom's people, other white priestesses, and their guardians. This is how the story is presented to you. It's easily processable as you collect notes, but some down the road may be collected out of order, which could be a little confusing if you're not paying attention. However, you always have access to the notes, so you can always refresh on what you've just picked up to piece together the narrative before Umbral woke Lily from her slumber. Following Lily's awakening, it's up to her and Umbral to find the root of the blight afflicting the land and purify it once and for all. However, there's multiple endings, and depending on your actions at two distinct points will determine which ending you obtain. I can talk about those another time to avoid spoiling in this video. Like many Metroidvanias before this, Ender Lilies plays exclusively on a two-dimensional plane, but that doesn't mean they don't take full advantage of this. Much of the map is limited to the four directions, up, down, left, and right, for entering and leaving areas. Some areas have doors that connect to smaller locations that can contain secrets, like amulet fragments which increase your health chains of sorcery which grant additional relic slots, an additional skill, or even pathways back into the larger rooms that lead to other secrets. Respites are the game's save points and, well, respites. You can enhance your spirit's ability with blight that you accumulate after defeating enemies or obtaining large quantities from already dead blighted by purifying them. Umbral, however, requires ancient souls to upgrade his abilities, which does lead to a bit of his story but that's uncharted waters for this video. Each spirit can be upgraded a total of five times, although later spirits do come at higher levels, which does little to lessen the later grind when you need some 800 blight to upgrade one ability to max. Many spirits relate to movement upgrades. You have your standard jump, double jump, wall climb, dash, slams, and aquatic abilities. Each of these allowing you access to areas and secrets in many rooms across the map. I always found myself backtracking after obtaining a new ability to see if this new dash or being able to swim underwater would let me clear out a room I previously couldn't on my first run past it. One of my favorites even requires use of spirits you may not even find on your first playthrough if you're not purposefully going for 100%. Big movement upgrades typically come from bosses, and the dash and dash attack is obtained from easily my favorite boss in the game who's found in the ruined castle. I mentioned Hollow Knight earlier, and like that game's badge system, Ender Lilies has relics. Relics can do a variety of things, such as giving you more defense, more prayer stacks, hastening your prayer ability, others even augmenting your jump and dash, 
oh so slightly. I typically play these games more recklessly, so I found myself using more relics that granted extra prayer. And there's even a point where you're going to need those extra prayer stacks because, oh man, the amount of blight damage you'll take is absolutely insane. The control in this game is simple as this. It's fluid, and it's tight. Difficulty-wise, it's not too hard, but not too easy. It's a level that feels like every death can have a discernible point that you can point to and say, if only I did this, or maybe if I dashed behind them here. It never feels unfair, and never feels like control was taken away from you. While some attacks may seem unavoidable, dashing or using the relic that lets you parry can allow you to avoid many attacks you wouldn't think possible. The game doesn't hold your hand, but it also doesn't just leave you completely by the wayside to figure things out. While my experience with the Metroidvania genre is more limited than others, I am all too familiar with the feeling of getting far into a run, for going to save, and dying, only to have to do all of it all over again. Ender Lilies doesn't do that. When dying in Ender Lilies, any progress you made is saved, which even nowadays, as a chronic saver, I simply enjoy the freedom of being able to die without fear of losing hours of progress. From melancholic and melodic pieces, regal and grandeur, to eerie and mysterious, the game has a varied yet desolate soundtrack composed by musical group Melee, who have worked on properties such as Goblin Slayer and Ghost in the Shell. From the cliffside hamlet's very soft melody to the ruined castle's imposing yet melancholic grandeur, giving you the impression, even without seeing the environment details, that this is the music befitting a castle, but one long abandoned by time. The cliffside hamlet is one I've readily hummed at work on more than one occasion because it's a simple track. Not a whole lot to miss in those details. Some areas of the map have no music at all, and it certainly builds on the tension of why is there no music playing? This doesn't feel right. But in that tension, you take in the environment around you until you enter that next zone and the music starts again, filling the empty air you'd expect in a long dead kingdom. It's hard to really describe the feeling I got from these pieces without exploring a lot of spoiler territory. But it's easy to say that I felt uneasy when traversing some of these areas because of the music that played. The game is rather beautiful, if I had to say so myself. Beautifully crafted backgrounds and foregrounds as you traverse, seeing the myriad of homes in the cliffside hamlet to the horrifying visages as you descend deeper into the verboten domain. This game is not for lack of character, and is brimming to the edge with it from enemy designs that'll have you in awe of their fluidity, to Lily's own movements and the spirits you use in combat, all of which are pleasant to look at. I mentioned the verboten domain, and I don't want to spoil much, so I'll keep it as brief as I can. This zone has perhaps some of the most interesting and creative designs in the whole game. It's in there you'll find a myriad of creatures that'll have you going, what the hell is that? I can fight that? Light sources like candles and lanterns give off a very lovely particle effect that I've caught myself staring at when resting at a respite. When dormant enemies awaken, they shift a red hue that reminded me of a fog. I believe I could say that this game looks beautiful. I'd say it looks hand-drawn, but these days I find myself truly unable to tell. These environments are so wonderfully crafted that I am saddened that the map doesn't share this same love. The map itself isn't much, but a series of boxes that indicate rooms and their connections. It works, so I'm not complaining about its functionality, but it lacks an identity. If you put this next to another map that looked relatively similar without knowing what game they belong to, you'd find yourself scratching your head. A stark contrast to Hollow Knight's color-coded map. I would like to reiterate what I said in the beginning. Play this game. I swear it is well worth it. I only found Ender Lily's Quietus of the Nights a couple of months before its official launch day on Steam and Switch. 
I've kept my eye on it ever since. I didn't want to play the early access because I wanted to jump in wholly blind and unsuspecting. And I don't regret it at all. This game left such a positive impression on me that I felt the need to make this video. After spending 21 hours on it, 100%ing it on my very first playthrough, and the dozens of death under my belt, this game was well worth the money I spent on it. And I'd love to see where the developers go after this. If you're a fan of the Metroidvania genre, it's well worth the time investment. If you're new to it, I would recommend taking it slow. There's no need to rush in this game. Ender Lilies is available on Nintendo Switch and Steam currently, and soon to be available on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Xbox Series S for $24.99 USD. I know it's been several months since I made that one video back in like January saying I was thinking of coming back to YouTube and Twitch. While I have been periodically streaming on Twitch, some personal matters happened in May and early June where I felt the need to take more time to myself, which really just led me to think that I couldn't do this kind of thing. But with that in mind, I started working on scripts for videos that so far have not seen the light of day and it's allowed me to even consider making this video. And honestly, I would like to receive feedback, especially on areas where you feel like I would need to improve. Allow me to thank you for your time in watching this video. My name is Colin. I hope you have a fantastic day today, and stay safe out there.